everybody. My name is Gregory Fisher, and I'm managing director of Jefferies, based out of Atlanta. Um, I thought that that t this evening, what we would try and do um, is kind of give you the the thirty thousand foot view of this crazy world we live in right now, as far as the economic platform, um, and talk a little bit about my favorite topic, which is the Caribbean uh, and Latin America. As Sharon said, I've been coming down. My first trip to Jamaica was in 1992. Um, I was a little bit younger. I started when I was one. Um, and I've been coming down ever since. And so that's a lot of prime ministers uh, that I've worked with over the years. And it's been, it's been a great journey. So I, I call myself a Jamaican with pride because I usually come down here between 10 and 15 times a year. Um, when I was flying down from Atlanta this morning, I really just wanted to scribble some notes. And of course, this lady started talking to me, asking what I was writing. Was I writing it to my wife? And she tried to put the earphones in. Um, so I thought I would just bring up some topics that I think that will spawn maybe some questions later on. And then Bob, who is my partner and my boss, is going to kind of um, go off some of the things I've said and talk more specific about what to do in this crazy environment. Um, one thing that's important to realize is that we view Victoria Mutual as your guys' conduit to the global markets. Um, we certainly handle individuals, but I think this thing is the real. Um, but from the standpoint of Victoria Mutual, as a conduit, you're treated more like an institution because Victoria Mutual is an institution. So from the standpoint of transactional business and other sorts of business, it's to your benefit. So I want you to view that as, as something that's important to us. There's a lot of history between Victoria Mutual and myself with Devin. I've known Devin for over two decades. Um, so it's something that is close that we're going to certainly continue. Um, I want to at least tell you a little bit about Jefferies before I kind of tell you about the global markets from my own perspective. And I, and I mention my own perspective because I got to make sure you all know that this is my opinion. My legal department really doesn't like for me to say things on behalf of the company unless I say it's my own opinion. Okay? So this is definitely all my own opinion. This part's not. Uh, Jefferies, we currently have 12 billion in capital. Um, we are one of the largest investment banks on Wall Street. Uh, actually, our chairman, Rich Handler, is the longest CEO holding that title. Everybody thinks it's Jamie Dimon, but it's actually Rich Handler uh, on Wall Street. And I actually started off in the 80s with him at Drexel Burnham, and many, maybe a few of you may know that company, but he's been uh, at Jefferies for a long time. We're a Fortune 200 company. We're in the S&P 500. Um, and in 2017, we underwrote more high-yield bonds than anybody on Wall Street. So Jefferies is certainly a company that is big enough to get done what you need done, but yet small enough to have a good, tight relationship with somebody like Victoria Mutual. Let me move on to some just random thoughts. Um, I, I don't want to scare you, and, and you, know, you see the stock market today of what's going on. Th this is something that the, the only bull market that I see right now is in volatility. Okay, that's the only bull market I see is in volatility. Um, I, as I said, I've been doing this 35 years, and there's been a few occasions where I've seen volatility like this, but not many. I mean, today, the market, I think, when I got on the airplane was up 133 points, the Dow, and it closed down 424 points. That's very, very tough to navigate markets like that. Um, I, I look at, you know, the reversals that we've had. Um, I lost count at... 80 days so far this year where their market has either been up or down 100 points and gone the other direction. Uh, that's something that, that again, last time I saw that uh, was in 1987, and some of you may remember that date. Uh, that was not a, a great year towards October, but that's when the last time we saw the volatility. The volatility, in my opinion, is fostered by excessive valuations in the U.S. stock market solid earnings that are due to the tax reform or the Trump tax reform, trade tensions, geopolitical issues, 
And also a lot of players, the institutional market, the tier ones, looking to book profits whenever they can. And this is the biggest issue, a new Fed. A Fed that for the first time in over a decade is hawkish. We've had pretty easy time in America when it comes to rates, the Fed, accommodation, QE1, QE2, they sound like boats, QE3, um, and those days are over with, the accommodation. Um, even with the Dow near its all-time high, only the top five performers are really keeping the Dow in the positive, which is barely right now, so far for 2018. So what I'm trying to say is that's a very narrow group of stocks that are really holding things in. That's not a bullish sign. What that's a sign is we're at the late cycle of a bull market. Another sign, on the sell days like today, the volume is extremely, extremely heavy. On days we see rallies, the volume is very light. That's what we call bad breath in the market. And the market is displaying that on an ongoing basis. And that's something that, that, that we certainly have to be aware of. And again, these are all what I look at late cycle developments. So if I give the analogy to uh, baseball, we're like in the ninth inning or the eighth inning of a long, the longest bull market, a 106 month old bull market, the second longest in the history of our country. We're not in the beginning part of the cycle. Historically, good earnings wave, like we're seeing right now, these great earnings that you're seeing and you can't figure out why the market is going down, is usually followed by a recessionary period in the United States. I'll give you an example. 1990, in quarter three, earnings per share, we were running at 10% earnings gains, and a recession was around the corner. In 2000, uh, the third quarter, earnings were up 14.9% for the quarter. Recession was in, uh, followed a year away. And in 2007, the second quarter, earnings were up 9%, and recession was six months off. So. Why am I saying this? What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story, why I'm here, is you can't be complacent. Things change. I've been down in Jamaica, we're going to talk about Jamaica in a little bit, where everybody was expecting the double-digit returns off the government of Jamaica bonds that I trade every day. Things are changing. Global rates are going higher, Jamaica rates are going lower. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. So if that is changing, our mentality, our methodology has got to change. We've got to be ahead of the curve. And I'm going to let Bob address a lot of this, but I'm kind of planting the seed in your brains a little bit. Um, the two things that, that I want to discuss are fixed income and the Fed. Fixed income is how Jamaica really have, have played the market since I've been down here. And I've been a bond trader, well, since the beginning of time, I almost, but for my whole life. Um, and these are two important things and two important um, categories that I want to at least opine on a little bit uh, before I turn it over to Bob. One thing that's really important is to realize that the new Fed chairman, Powell, is not Janet Yellen. As I said before, th this is a real hawk. This is a guy that's not an economist. This is a guy that doesn't care what the stock market does on a daily basis. This is a guy that's already raised rates 150 basis points. This is a guy that says we're gonna raise three or four more times. And you have to understand, in, in our business, here in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, in the US, most of the people that do what we do have never seen higher rates. They've never seen rates in America go up, unless they've been in the business as long as myself or Bob. So what we're gonna try and do is kind of tell you what we think and how to handle and invest in this type of scenario and this type of an environment. Um, the bottom line is, and I'm gonna move on to Jamaica a little bit and then turn it over to, to Bob, is no matter what your thesis is, you have to have an investment thesis. Victoria Mutual can help you with that. That's what they do for a living. And as I said, they are the direct access and line to me and my team. 
Um, and Bob is making sure that my team takes care of Victoria Mutual. That's how it works. That's how it's worked since I've been down here. Uh, we, we, we ran a $4 billion custody business in Jamaica alone. So we've been doing this for a long time, and it's something that we take very, very seriously. Now let's talk about Jamaica, which is my favorite topic because I've probably scared the hell out of you about our markets in America. Um, Jamaica, as I, I've said, is a very special place to me and always has been. But what we've seen is something I've not seen in all my years coming down here, and that is after years and years of pain and fiscal austerity, after NDX1, NDX2, you are finally seeing growth. And that is a first for us in Jamaica. I mean, positive growth. We're seeing inflation at 4%. Unemployment, I think, is below 11% now, I, I think. Um, I look at uh, the interest rate cycle here, which is not going the same way in the United States. You guys, interest rates are coming down finally here in Jamaica. Jamaica has become a leader of the economic community. When I started down here, it was certainly Trinidad, it was Barbados, and Jamaica fell somewhere down there. Jamaica now really is the gem of the Caribbean. You've got Trinidad, I'll talk a little bit at the end coming up here. You've got Trinidad going through a recession. You've got Barbados that is basically gone from investment grade to junk rated paper like that, that are kind of in a little bit state of denial when it comes to the IMF and things they should do. But you've got Jamaica that did the right thing and go towards the IMF really early in the ball game. And it wasn't fun. I was down here. It was not fun. But it worked because you stayed within the goalposts. I think there are three key ingredients to Jamaica's outperformance. If you look, for example, on the Jamaica bond curve in 2016, you, you guys would have returned 14.3% total return in your portfolio. Last year was 14%. Um, last year, I think I did the math, that Jamaica outperformed the MB Global Index by 471 basis points. That's more than anybody in Latin America or the Caribbean. Let me repeat that. That was number one as far as performance with the MB Global Index. The reason for this, one, is the confidence that Jamaica is now giving the, the global markets. There are huge tier one institutions that are buying Jamaica debt because of the performance. That's the number two, is your country's fiscal performance. It's the only country I've ever seen where you go from administration to administration and the one thing that has remained constant over the last decade is the fiscal performance. And it's been handed off from one administration to the next. Never seen anything like it. I think it's fantastic. And that brings me to the third uh, ingredient of Jamaica's success. I call this the holy grail. And this is true growth and growth that is lowering your debt to GDP at a rate that, again, I would have not believed many, many years ago. Um, my gut is if the government down here stays the course, the rating agencies will get this story right eventually. They've been wrong on a lot of things, including back during the financial crisis, and they are gun shy to do upgrades. But Jamaica is long, long overdue, and that's why we're seeing the spread so tight and the yields so low. I mean, the yields, we're talking 5 6% at best, and it was just yesterday, it seems like they were 11 12 13%. It's been that quick. So I've been rambling up and kind of skipping on and talking about a lot of different things, but what I'm trying to do is plant into your brain a couple a couple points to kind of form a thesis. One, these markets are very difficult to navigate, whether you're talking about Caribbean debt, whether it be DR or Barbados or Cayman or Bahamas, Bermuda or Jamaica. The U.S. stock market, the global stock markets, rates higher in the states, lower here. These are very difficult times that I have only seen once or twice in my career. So that conduit of Victoria Mutual for you to get the opinion of somebody like me or Bob and others is going to be crucial. It's going to be crucial going forward when the days of yesteryear, all you had to do was clip your coupons on Jamaica debt and you were just fine. As a matter of fact, you weren't just fine, you performed 
outperformed everybody else in the world. 14, 15% returns? That's incredible. That's incredible. I think we've got a little spoiled. And I would love for us to keep at that rate, but we have to be realistic. So I'm gonna put in your brain that we have to change our thinking and that hopefully that, that's what Bob is gonna pick up on. The positive thing, and I'll close on this, is that your country, Jamaica, of where it's come from and where it is right now, you could not be better insulated in this type of market environment being in a country that has her act together. And, I, and I'm not saying that because you all are Jamaican or listening to me. I'm telling you from the heart. I've dealt with the governments from one administration. I, was, I think I was talking to Devin. The first prime minister was manly when I came down here. Um, so I know I'm, I'm that okay. I know you had to, you had to not, didn't you? Yeah, okay. Um, and now I'm a lot older than the prime minister, the current prime minister. But that's another story. Um, so you look at it, you look at where we've come from. 10, 15 years ago, we were hanging on by a fingertip down here, a fingertip. And now we're the crown jewel in the Caribbean, and all of you deserve a round of applause for that. Okay, all of you.